Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. To make advanced changes to an image, you can use the Format Picture dialog box in order to control every aspect of your clip art in minute detail. You can access this dialog box by clicking the Format Picture or Format Shape button that appears in the lower right corner of the Picture Styles group on the Format tab of the Picture Tools Contextual tab within the ribbon. The options that you can change are grouped by category. You can see the categories shown in a list at the left side of this dialog box. To use this dialog box, you select a category from the left side of the dialog box and then make any changes to the available settings in the category at the right side of the dialog box. Once you've finished making your changes, you can then click the close button to close the dialog box. Now unlike many other dialog boxes, the changes that you make here are applied immediately as they are set so you may need to use the reset picture button to reset your image after experimenting with the settings in this dialog box if you decide that you do not like them. Now in this lesson, we're going to examine the settings that we can change in each category. So first, let's examine the various categories and what can be changed within each category. So the categories that you can select are fill, line color, line style, shadow, 3D format, 3D rotation, picture, and text box. Now the first thing that you should note is that some of the options may not be available for the type of object that you have selected. So for example, the picture category is only available when you have a picture selected. You can click the fill category in order to change settings that affect the appearance of the inside fill of some types of clip art. For this to be used effectively with images, the selected image must contain a transparent section. If the image is already completely filled with its own content, then changing these settings would produce no visible effect. However, if your selected image contains a transparent background, then you can use the settings in the fill section to format the background area within the image. You can select the no fill option to remove any fill effect from the selected image. You can also select the Solid Fill option to fill the background of the image with a color of your choosing. You simply use the Color drop-down to select the desired color to use. You can then use the Transparency slider to set the level of transparency that should be applied to the background fill. You can also select a Gradient Fill in order to fill the background of the image with a multicolor gradient. A gradient is simply a color that transitions in hue and or transparency from one angle to another. You can choose from one of the many preset gradients available by simply making a selection from the preset colors drop down. If you want to make your own custom gradient, then you can use the additional buttons and sliders to customize the selected gradient. You can use the type drop down to select the type of gradient that you want to use and you have the choices of linear which changes colors from one side to another across a straight line, radial which changes colors starting from an origin point and then radiating outward in a circular pattern, rectangular which changes colors starting from an origin point and then radiating outward in a rectangular pattern, or path which follows the path of a line that you draw. Now once you've selected a type of gradient other than path, then you can select the specific variation that you would like to use from the direction drop-down. If you select a linear gradient type, you may also be able to select the angle at which the gradient changes by entering the desired angle in degrees into the angle spinner box. Now the gradient stop section allows you to set the number and appearance of changing points in the gradient's color scheme. At its most basic level, a gradient must have at least two gradient stops. For example, if a gradient changed from black to white in a linear fashion, then it would have at least two gradient stops, but you can have more if desired. You use the gradient stops drop-down to select the gradient stop whose properties you wish to set. Then use the stop position slider to set the position at which you want the gradient stop to be placed. You then use the color drop-down to set what color you want the gradient to be at the selected point. 
You can then use the transparency slider to set the transparency level of the color that you selected at the chosen point. Now if you wish to remove a gradient stop, select the stop that you want to delete and then click the remove button to delete the selected stop from the gradient. You can also add more gradient stops by simply clicking the add button. The additional stops will simply be numbered and added to the gradient stops drop down. You can then select them and make any changes to their settings as usual. Now at the bottom of this tab, you can check the rotate with shape checkbox in order to set the gradient fill to rotate with the image if the image is rotated. You can select the picture or texture fill option to fill the background of the selected image with another image of your choosing. Textures are simply images that are included in PowerPoint. To apply one of the preset textures, you can select your choice from the texture dropdown. If you want to use a picture that's located on your computer, then either click the File button in order to open the Insert Picture dialog box where you can select the image file from your computer to insert, or click the Clipboard button to paste the contents of your clipboard into the background of the image, or if you want to insert another piece of clip art into the background, you can instead click the Clip Art button to open the Select Picture dialog box and you can use this dialog box to search for clip art to insert into the background of the image. Now you can change the background images offset settings in the stretch options section. You can use the left, right, top, and bottom spinner boxes to input the percentage by which the image should be offset from the selected sides. If you would like to tile or repeat the background as a texture, then you can check the tile picture as texture tech checkbox. Then in the tiling options section, you have to input the offset X and offset Y options to set the amount of horizontal and vertical offset to apply to the background image. You then can use the scale X and scale Y spinner boxes to set the percentage of the image to display in the tiled background. Now you can then use the alignment dropdown to set the alignment of the background image within the main image. You can also use the mirror type dropdown to select the type of reflection to apply to the tiled images in the background. Finally, you can set the amount of transparency to apply to the background fill by using the transparency slider. Also, if you want the background to rotate with the image, if the main image is rotated, then check the rotate with shape checkbox. Now if you would like to fill the image with the background fill of the slide, then simply select the Slide Background Fill option in the Fill category. Now the next option is going to be Line Color. As applied to images, these attributes set the color of the picture's border. The three options shown to the right are No Line, Solid Line, or Gradient Line. Now if you do not wish to have a line or wish to remove a border that's been applied, then you can select the No Line option. If you would like to apply a solid line border, then select the solid line option. Notice when you do this, additional settings become available. So first select a color for the line border from the color drop down button's palette of choices. If the colors shown aren't quite what you need, notice that you can select the more colors command at the bottom of the color palette in order to open the colors dialog box. In the colors dialog box, you can create almost any color you desire. This dialog box is available in almost all of the places where you can choose a color. You can either click the standard tab and then select one of the colors shown in the honeycomb of color choices, or you can click the custom tab and then select the color that you want. Note that at the bottom of both tabs, you can use the transparency slider to set the level of transparency to apply. If you open the color dialog box to select a color, then click the OK button once you've made a choice to return to the format picture dialog box. Note that the transparency slider also appears as a choice in the dialog box as well. If you want to apply a gradient line, then you can select the gradient line option in order to view a different set of options in the line color area. You can apply a gradient to a border in the same way that you can apply a gradient to a fill. So these options should be familiar to you as we just covered them in the fill section. Now you can click the line style category 
in order to make changes to any line, or in this case picture border, that changes either its thickness or its appearance. So you can use the width spinner box to set the width of the line. You can use the compound type drop-down to choose a multi-style line versus a single thick line. You can use the dash type to select a dash type instead of a solid line if desired. The cap type drop-down allows you to change the appearance of the ends of lines. This isn't often used in applying picture borders, however the join type is. The join type drop-down allows you to set the appearance of the junction points where two lines meet. Also note that if working with arrows, which are simply a type of line, you can set their appearance in the arrow settings section. This would not be the case with picture borders, however. You can click the shadow category at the left side of this dialog box in order to view settings at the right that allow you to apply a shadow to your selected image. You can easily apply one of the pre-created shadow styles by selecting one from the presets drop-down. If you want to customize your shadow's appearance, then you can start by choosing a shadow color from the color drop-down. You can set the transparency of the shadow by using the transparency slider. You can also set the size of the shadow by selecting a size from the size slider. You can then use the blur slider to set the amount of blurring applied to the edge of the shadow. You can change the angle of the shadow by entering the desired angle into the angle text box or using the angle slider. And you can control the amount of vertical offset applied to the shadow by using the distance slider to choose the amount of vertical offset to apply. If you would like to apply a 3D effect to your selected image, then start by clicking the 3D format category at the left side of the format picture dialog box. In the bevel section, you can use the top and bottom drop-down buttons to select a style and thickness of beveling to apply. You can also enter values into the width and height spinner boxes if, if desired. In the depth section, you can use the color drop-down to select a coloring for the depth. You can also set the amount of coloring by using the depth spinner box. Likewise, in the contour section, you can use the color drop-down to select a color for the contour of the bevel. You can then set the size of the contour by entering the size into the size spinner box. In the surface section, you apply settings that change the appearance of the material and lighting used in the 3D setting. So you can use the material drop-down to select the type of material that the 3D effect should emulate. Then use the lighting drop-down to select an intensity and style of lighting to apply. You can also use the angle spinner box to set the angle of the lighting if desired. You can rotate the image in 3D space by changing the settings that appear in the 3D rotation category at the left side of this dialog box. When you select this category, you can easily apply a 3D rotation by selecting from one of the presets available. If you wish to apply your own custom rotation, then you can use the buttons and sliders in the rotation section to accomplish that. You can enter a rotation angle for the X, Y, and Z coordinates by using the spinner boxes or by simply clicking the adjacent buttons. Now if you selected a perspective 3D style from the preset drop-down, you'll be able to enter an angle into the perspective spinner box. 
If you were applying a 3D rotation to a text box, you would be able to keep the text appearing flat by checking the Keep Text Flat checkbox. This does not apply to pictures, however. You can use the distance from ground spinner box to set the amount of space that the selected object will appear to be from the ground. You can click the Picture category to make adjustments to the selected image. Note that unless you have an image selected, you will not be able to change any options to the right. Otherwise, you will see options at the right side of the Format Picture dialog box that will allow you to perform some of the basic image editing that you can also perform using the buttons available on the Format tab of the Picture Tools Contextual tab. You can use the Recolor drop-down to select a color to apply to the selected image. You can also use the brightness and contrast sliders to set the amount of brightness and contrast for the selected image. Also, you can click the reset button to reset changes to your image if necessary. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.